Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dan, the voice behind that Kaito Dan, and welcome to a big, 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 big breaking Ruby News segment. We are here at last at RTX 2016, so of course we get a megaton information drop regarding the entire future for Ruby in terms of Volume 4 and other kinds of things like merchandise, video games and all that jazz. But yes, there was a lot of information dropped at the first of two Ruby panels. Um, unfortunately, I and many others who can't be there for RTX, um, like, like uh, Murder of Birds and Bracket Studio and Jack One Man Band and all that, uh, all of you lucky buggers. <laughs> um, unfortunately for many of us who had to stay at home and had to watch via the Twitch stream, the stream was kind of botched in terms of the audio, so a lot of times we weren't able to see what was going on or even hear what was going on. So about halfway through was when we started to get some more information. Of course, there were some moments where the stream did kind of uh, cancel out so those at the event would get to see some sneak peeks at some exclusive stuff. And while some of that was also kind of slipped through accidentally by some technical issues, I'm not going to go over that. And also, please, please, please do not leak any footage, because it's just unfair to the, Ru uh, to the Ruby crew. But yes, I'm not going over any of the stuff that was exclusive to those present at RTX. Rather, stuff that was shown more publicly, and just stuff uh, released to the open. So, let's get through all of this now, because we got a lot to go through. Starting with the big one. When is Volume 4 starting? Well, I can tell you that it is, drumroll please, brrrr, starting on October 22nd. Yeah, it's a little bit away, but it's in that usual area that we kind of get Ruby, but yep, Rooster Teeth will bring back Ruby for Volume 4 on October 22nd, and you can bet your ass that I'm going to be there for Ruby reviews and reactions. But of course, there wasn't just the release date shown, we actually got something pretty big. New designs for Team Ruby. And why? Because we are going into a time skip. I'll go into more of that in a second, but let's actually go through the designs first. Let's start with the titular character, Ruby herself. And immediately, I instantly thought of her design from the fan work henceforward, especially with the white kind of cotton blouse top deal, but she still kind of looks like her usual self, there's still a lot of black and a lot of red there, she's still got a trademark hood, even though it's kind of shredded up, just kind of like her rose tights as well, which also have a nice rose pattern there, which I really like. Um, she's definitely older looking, she's got a bit more age to her, she's not exactly like into her 20s I would say, I would say near enough the back end of 18 perhaps. Um, puberty has hit her, I guess I could say. Um, but she still, she still looks like a very young and very wild, bold child to really suit her personality. Um, also in some promo art, we saw a little bit of Crescent Rose, and to me, it kind of looks worn down a little and kind of chipped, especially along the blade. I don't know if that's just an effect used for some sort of tone effect, or if it's actually the state of the weapon itself in canon. Could that possibly mean that uh, maybe Ruby is unable to uh, keep manage of her weapon in her current traveling state, or is there going to be a point where maybe Crescent Rose will have to get upgraded or abandoned for a different kind of weapon? Who knows? Let's go now on to her partner, Weiss, who has a big, kind of like, I guess sort of emotionally different sort of approach to her design. For one, her ponytail is now moved from the side to the back, and if I recall correctly, her side ponytail was a rebellious action Weiss had against her father, um, a look that his her father didn't approve, at least according to what I think Monty said in a behind the scenes interview bit. But yeah, she's now got a back ponytail now, suiting her more, I guess, sort of fitting an heiress sort of attire. You can see with her uh, more graceful sort of um, muted, it's 
a dress sort of skirt deal because there's two alterations here um, with different heels as well and some more jewels but it's definitely less a fighter attire and more of a noble attire which could be on top of everything else a sign that maybe at this point in time Weiss is slowly starting to return to a sort of area where she's accepting her heiress role and the pressure that she's put under by her dad especially with everything that went down at Beacon uh, will she still be defiant? Who knows, but she kind of looks like she's taken a few steps backwards and we don't know if she will be uh, returning to a rebellious state. Could be uh, something that her sister Winter could aid her in, but she kind of, I like this, um, again, this sort of graceful young maiden, sort of young heiress approach to her. It's something that we don't see much of her since even though she does wear sort of regal garb um, beforehand with a usual full white attire, it's definitely an attire that screams I'm still able to kick ass. But this definitely feels like something I would see uh, if I was meeting the heiress at say a gala or something like that. Now we go on to Blake, who's definitely still in the area of being the cool rebel attire, especially with that long white coat and some very high boots. And she's also wearing her bow, so she's still defiant on that element of still trying to keep her identity a secret. But of course, we last known that Blake ran away after what happened to Yang uh, at the hands of Adam. This attire, to me, kind of screams that she is still working on something sleek for fast combat, but also something very leader-like. Maybe this is a sign of her attire showing off that she may have maybe form some sort of rebel group to go up against, pardon me, go up against the White Fang. It just seems something that, I don't know, she's always sort of worn clothing that would help her stealth-like abilities, but something like a long flowing, clo uh, long flowing coat, especially a white one against mostly black, kind of stands out, so it kind of feels like something that screams, I'm, I'm an authoritative figure, but also very uh, calculated, a very mature, sort of edgy sort of deal. Um, definitely seems to fit her mantra. It's just a question of, does this attire scream any kind of position that she's currently in? Is she by herself again? Is she with a different group? Is she still trying to find ways to turn Adam back around, or does she think that's a lost cause now? Um, it might have something to do with Yang, who definitely has a big contrast of her attire compared to what we know about her previously. Beforehand, her attire was very combat-oriented, but it also had a style to it, sort of alluring, attractive, kind of showing off the more, you know, noticeable features, a fair bit of skin here and there and all that. But here it's definitely more casual, kind of urban-like than anything else. The big obvious detail is the fact that she still only has one arm, she hasn't had any kind of prosthetic added on. In fact, it's mostly still bandaged at some point if you just look at this point here. But it's very, very, uh, again, casual, like something you would wear just around the home, so not exactly something maybe you would wear in combat. And if you just look at her pose and her face, it still screams that sort of crushed mood that she was in after everything that went down at Beacon, um, as you saw in her bed with that scene with Ruby. More than likely, a lot of it down to being, uh, I guess, betrayed or uh, her trust betrayed by Blake. And that's obviously a big element to her current mood, I imagine. But it's interesting to think that when we also see a little Bumblebee clip added to some portion of her trousers, um, so could that just be like a subtle tease the creators, uh, the creators put in towards the Bumblebee shippers? Or is that some sort of element that Yang herself chose for her attire to sort of remind her of the past, even though she may kind of be on ends with her current situation with Blake? There's also another emblem on her trousers, but I can't get a good read on it. It kind of looks like a black sort of fist uh, emblem in between two white teeth. But I kind of can't see what would uh, warrant that emblem. It kind of seems like some of them would be tied more to the Grim, and I think Yang would probably want to have as little to do with the Grim as possible right now. But overall, that's 
all of the attires that we've seen brand new for Team Ruby, and I really, really like it. It's something that I wanted to see, especially after the sort of new attires that we saw for that stealth mission in Volume 2. Something to see that um, these characters are still very much alive and not just stuck to one pair of clothes. This, however, seems to be that the clothes are selling a lot of the emotion and a lot of the current state that the characters are in. And it feels a bit more of a mature attire as well, which definitely sells a lot of what should be Volume 4's story. More, um, more an emotional tale, a more mature tale. Something that's really going to be focusing on the character's story, not just them involved in a big story. But yes, the story element, this time skip element that a lot of people I've seen kind of 50-50 on. Me personally, I think it can work so long as it's balanced right. I mean, I don't even imagine we'll start off Volume 4 with the time skip. I could easily see us starting with some and in some incidents with uh, the more current age that we know of for the likes of Ruby, Jean, Ren and Nora, and then at some point we see a big incident that transitions into the more um, older states. Who knows what's gonna uh, play down there, but we've got a quote, I think, from Carrie. Uh, again, I was going off the botched Twitch stream, so if there's any incorrect information, sorry there. But the quote seems to say that the time skip in terms of length is nothing massive or anything, but stuff happens. The way I see it with that quote, what I would hope from the Volume 4 story and what I can see from the designs of the characters, I'm willing to bet that it has been at least 8 months less or about a year at most in terms of the length from the end of Volume 3 to the start or whatever of this current time arc. But I don't think this is going to be something that's going to be too drastic. I do hope though that we do see uh, what happens on the early eight, the early stages of Team Ranger's um, travels, especially towards Haven, and of course figuring out what other design, uh, what's the designs for the likes of Jean, Ren, um, Nora. Again, if it's mentioned at any point in the exclusive footage, please don't spoil it for me um, or for anyone else. I'm just going for what was released to the public. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing now what are all the new designs for all the characters. Um, especially for the likes of some fan favorites like Coco and Velvet, um, and I wonder if this is going to transition as well into any new designs for the villains. Um, we didn't see anything on them, we don't know anything about their current position, but I imagine maybe there'll be some changes there. We did however see one new iteration in terms of the Grimm. Now apparently the Beowulfs and the Nevermore Grimms were shown off with a bit more of an evolved look to them, a bit more ravenous, a bit more kind of nasty, some sort of like misty sort of trails behind them and the uh, like the reds of their eyes flow in a trail behind them, a bit more beastly than before which definitely excites me. But also we saw a brand new Grim, a primate Grim in fact which I believe is called Beringo. Um, if the pronunciation is wrong, uh, please excuse me there. And from the research that I've done, it seems to be based on, I believe, the Latin name for the Eastern Gorilla, which most people tend to see as the more common type of gorilla. Um, and that term was actually called uh, Beringue. Again, if the pronunciation is wrong, then I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Beringo are a new type of Grim. I was kind of hoping we would see a Gorilla Grim at some point, because that seems like a kind of really fitting animal to have for Grim. And looking at the images shown here, immediately it kind of reminded me of the Gorillas from, ironically, the music video by Gorillas in Clint Eastwood. But they're sort of like a melted face look to them, especially right at the top and along the back. Um, and if you see at the measuring uh, part of the image there, you can see it kind of towers over Ruby by a lot. I would say kind of in the same way or at least taller than an Ursa. But, of course, there's some other stuff to go through now. There was a ton of Ruby merch info as well. We've got some insight on bags, caps, key rings and figures and a lot more coming from the folks at Hot Topics who have already got some Rooster Teeth uh, Ruby merch out there right now but we've also got some insight on some upcoming new figures. 
uh, we saw previews for Ruby, Jean, Blake, and Zwei getting figures. Um, there's going to be some instances of two-inch, uh, I believe, blind pick figures line. So, kind of like when you pick a figure out of a box, I imagine, and you see what you get. There's also going to be some four-inch ones and some six-inch ones. And yes, that is a picture of a figurine of Zwei's butt. Uh, thank Carrie for that one, I think. There's also apparently going to be some products related more to characters. Sort of attires and clothes and such like that that the characters would more than likely wear. So, if you can imagine what, say, Yang would more commonly be known to wear, something like that might be made, which I can imagine would be sort of like flashy, stylish, attractive looking jackets and vest tops and maybe some uh, shorts and all that kind of jazz. And I kind of like that. It kind of feels like it'd be something great for those who really want to invest in like role playing or cosplaying characters and that. And also one big thing that I'm really excited to hear about and I really want to see like how they look. Apparently we're going to be getting some plushies on Grimm and Zwei. A lot of us have wanted Grimm and Zwei plushies for a long time and it looks like we're finally getting some folks. And a lot of people also wanted a new line from McFarlane figures. The folks who have done those uh, team figures that uh, connect together to form a nice pose in a circle. There's been Team Ruby, Team Juniper, and now we've got Cinder's Faction. Also before the Ruby panel, we saw a launch trailer for the full version of Ruby Grim Eclipse coming out for Steam, and also apparently coming out for consoles some point by the end of the year, which I'm really looking forward to grabbing the console version. Uh, next up, we got some confirmation on terms of the Japanese dub. Apparently, Volume 2 and Volume 3 are coming, and by the time that they're done, the Japan fanbase will be in sync with the release of Volume 4. So that's going to be cool, so we can have the Japanese fanbase in time with us as we enjoy every single episode by the time they come out. Also, a big thing for one of my friends who really, really wanted this. Yes, Volume Freeze OST will be getting a physical version coming soon. I think we might hear something about that at the Jeff, uh, Jeff Williams um, concert, uh, concert later on in the RTX event. So be on the lookout for any information there. But that's it, folks. That's a lot of information dropped. A lot of my opinion shared on everything in terms of the new designs, the time skip, all the merch to come out, and there is so much to be excited for, folks. We can officially start to kick off the hype train again, this time for Volume 4, and I cannot wait to see what else is going to be shown along the way before October 22nd. What are your thoughts, though, on everything that was shown off at RTX? Is there anything that you would probably like to see from the characters? Is there any attires that you think are better than the others? Is there anything that you would have liked to hear, hear about? And what kind of merch would you like to see? Also, if there's any other information revealed at the event, expect a short extra video at some point later on, um, at some point during the week. But for now though, that's everything for me. Until next time though, have a good day or good night, 